What is up guys, Zach here from the Chaos Galaxy and today I'm going to be doing the Cyndian planet profile for set 4 of the Chaos Galaxy TCG. Although this is the final planet of the 7, I've still got a lot more cards to show you. I've got about 20 cards I haven't revealed yet and there's a big surprise coming so stay tuned for that. Uh, also, I've got a TCG shout out of the week going to Gem Blenders TCG. There'll be a link to his channel in the description. Um, he's a lifelong TCG maker like me, got lots of old TCG videos up there which is really cool. He's also setting up his game through Kickstarter, which is something I don't really know too much about. So it's been really interesting looking up those videos and watching a different process of starting a trading card game. So really cool, definitely check him out. And I can't wait to open up some packs of gem blenders on this channel at some point. Um, so I'll get on with the Sindian list for set four. Uh, so the planet Sindian is the heaven planet in the galaxy and its play style is all about kind of harmony and unity like heaven. So you're gonna be using lots of cards that will be on your planet, not too many in your hand or killed or in your galaxy. You want as many cards out as possible, all kind of working in harmony with each other and looking after each other. Um, and from there, the ability of the planet reads, Whilst you have more than one zone Sindian creature, your opponent cannot attack the one with the lowest health. So like the strong protecting the weak, um, and that's how the planet plays. So I'll get into the set four cards. The first creature we have is Gubonk. Um, he's a one star with 20 power and 40 health, so pretty weak, but he reads, this creature can attack your opponent's planet even if they have zoned creatures. So because of his low stats, you're probably going to have to combo him off with something else if you want to actually do any damage to your opponent. But similar to the card Point Phantom um, in the ability, just a lot weaker. And for the price of only one star, which is nice. Next up, we have a card that was first shown in the Sindian starter deck. It's Tran Cleric. Amazing artwork again by Gavora, so I just thought I'd throw him in set four. He reads, all your other zoned four star or lower creatures cannot be killed by resource card abilities. So this combos well with the planet Sindian's ability. Um, if you've got a if you've got a Tran Cleric and like a strong Sindian creature like a Drangel or something, the Drangel is going to protect Tran Cleric and Tran Cleric will protect the Drangel from things like Galaxy Crash. Um, so a really nice little combo there. Next up, we have a card that's quite kind of plain, but it's actually quite a big achievement for me. So this is Akopi, who's only got 110 power, 200 health, uh, and three stars with no ability. But now that I've made this guy, it means I have a creature from all of the seven planets. We've got a one star, a two star, a three star, a four star, and a five or six star creature that has no ability uh, from every planet, which is cool. I think it's important to have no ability creatures in the game because it keeps the game nice and simple for new players um, and just stops you kind of being overwhelmed by card tech. So uh, very pleased with Akapi and he definitely deserves a place in set four. Next up, this is the final creature for the video, unfortunately. Not too many from Sindian, but this is probably the best to last. It is Gardacron. Um, amazing, again, artwork by Gavora. She's got 120 power and 310 health, which is pretty hard to get past for a five star. And a cool ability that reads, your permanent resource cards that specifically list a creature or archetype name cannot be killed. And that's by you or your opponent. Uh, so I know the wording's quite specific on this. I'll just give you an example. So it would protect cards like, like Shiozian Lava and Hole because that actually lists the words Shiozian Lava in bold uh, on its card text. It wouldn't protect things that list specific planets because I know they have kind of the bold card name text in them. Um, but if a card that just says none of your Shios creatures can be killed, Gardacron won't attack them. It has to be a card name or part of a card name that's in an archetype. Um, so that is Gardacron. Next up, we have a couple of generic resource cards, which I think are going to be really good. Um, very interesting cards. And the first one we have is part of the Conjurers, and it is Conjuring Hat Cupboard. Um, little bit of lore. The Conjurers actually get their powers from their hats. I feel like a lot of people would assume it's from their staffs um, or just their magic abilities, but their hat is what gives them their power. Um, so you've got Battle Conjurer's hat there, Creature Conjurer there, Resource Conjurer and the anti Conjurer. I know we've got more Conjurers than this, but there are other places in the cupboard. This is just the main shelf in the cupboard. But this is a permanent resource, the first permanent resource card for the Conjurers. Uh, and it reads, once per turn, add one zone to your planet. But you cannot add the same type of zone more than once through this ability. So it's a really good card. You're getting a total of three zones through this ability. Um, you get once per turn... Once per turn, say your first turn, you can add a creature zone to your planet. 
Then once you've done that, you can add a battle zone the next turn and then a resource zone after that. Unfortunately, after this, the card will be stuck on your planet, not being able to do anything else and taking up a resource zone, which I think is what balances it out because you get zones, but this does use up one itself. But I think you could combo this really well with cards like Underwood Burrower to get rid of it and use it to your advantage. Um, or just wipe the board with cards like Meteoroid Storm once you've got all three zones from this. But yeah, takes a bit of time, but you get so many benefits from this. And I think this is a well-deserved rare in set four. Um, I'm really looking forward to see how it does. Because I kind of want more zone-making cards. Because I think having no zones really slows down games. Um, and one of my aims with set four is to speed the game up, like I've said a few times. Um, so hopefully Conjuring Hack Cupboard is going to be a widely used card. That, um, yeah, gets people's zones and speeds up battles. The next one is hopefully going to speed up games too. It's another rare, just a single use resource this time, and it is Star Mosaic. Very simple card. You gain one star for every zone on your planet. Um, so these two might actually be really good hand in hand. It doesn't matter if the zone's occupied or not, um, but if you have seven zones, you just play Star Mosaic, uh, you get seven stars. Easy as. Doesn't include your planet zone, unfortunately. Uh, maybe I should specify that. But yeah, if you draw this at the end of the game and you're saving up for a boss creature, you're going to be getting, yeah, like seven, eight, maybe even more stars than that, which is crazy. However, the drawback of this is I worry if you draw it in your opening hand when you've only got like one or two zones, the card won't be very good. So that's what balances it, I think. But worthy of the rare status, definitely. And I think Star Mosaic will be used in some decks like Utopanon, specifically for Sindian. Um, I think it'll be really good for Sindian because Sindian relies on having a lot of creatures on your planet in general. Um, so Star Mosaic works hand in hand with them. The final card we have for this video is a card I've already shown you. It's uh, Kabonk Silence Body for the Kabonk cards. Um, the text on this is wrong. I changed the card because I thought it was slightly overpowered, so I uh, dropped it off a bit. But let me know if you think you prefer this version and I can always change the card. So it reads, the attached creature also becomes a Sindian creature and is unaffected by your opponent's attachment abilities. That's the bit I've taken out. Um, it was just, and the abilities of creatures from the same planet as it. So uh, if you haven't seen the video on the Kabonks, definitely check it out. They're a really cool archetype, but basically they, they come from multiple planets um, and then use that to their advantage. So Kabonk Silence Body. If you have a Kabonk creature that's from like four different planets, it can't be killed by creatures with uh, any abilities from them. Um, so yeah, that's the final card for the video. So guys, thanks for watching this video. I need another card there. Hold on. Um, let me know what you think of the Sindian support for set four. I know there's not too many cards I've shown off here for the planet, but I think there's some really interesting cards, especially the resources for the Conjurers and the Star Mosaic. Um, really cool stuff. But yeah, lots more stuff from set four to reveal. The final chapter of the law should be my next video, guys. And it's a really good one. So please, please watch it because there's, there's going to be some really big stuff, like big game changing things. So stay tuned for that. Please like, comment, subscribe. Get your hands on some Chaos Galaxy packs. Uh, there'll be a link in the description below. The set four packs are in the mail to me now. And... Um, they should arrive in the next couple of weeks, and as soon as they arrive, I'm going to open them and release them to you guys. So can't wait for that. I really love set four. I think it's my favorite set, probably since set one. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. Um, follow me on Instagram. Uh, check out, there's a cool tournament, a pre-set four release tournament going on on the Discord now. So check that out. There'll be a link to the Discord in the description below. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.